and welcome back to another episode of Finn's Chats. In today's video, I noticed that a lot of pay-per-views coming up for the UFC, they don't have any cards or any fights booked. I, I looked down the line, they actually have fights booked for fight nights, but not for pay-per-views. It's kind of crazy that main cards in a, two months from now, three months from now, have not been booked. But don't worry, Finzy Matchmakers is on the scene, and I have matchmaked every pay-per-view starting from May all the way to December, end of year 2024. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so we got the May card. We already know the May card is going to be taking place in Brazil. It's going to be UFC 301. And a great main event that they're already discussing is Tom Aspinall versus Cyril Gaon. This is going to be for the interim belt. This will be a banger on all fronts. Well, you need a good co-main event for the Brazil card, right? Why not throw the Brazilian champion Alexandre Pantoja go up against Amir Albazi? I love this matchup. Amir Albazi, you know, he got a split decision win against Kai Kara France. Not the best, but... It's a good matchup for Pantoja. He hasn't fought him yet. And then for the featured fight, why not throw another Brazilian? We got Juliana Pena. We know she's next in line for the Bantamweight Women's Strap. Why not throw her up against Raquel Pennington? And that's not a bad card if I've ever seen one. Next up, we have the June card, which is going to be UFC 302. No main event yet. I was, uh, I'm not really sure where they're going to have this card. I know there's a Saudi Arabia fight night happening in June that just might overtake the pay-per-view so with that in mind i'm treating this as if it's going to be in saudi arabia or something along those lines for those reasons the main event is going to be islam makachev defending his lightweight strap against the winner of Oliveira versus saruki uh, i didn't really put a winner there i don't i don't know who's actually going to win that fight it's going to be a banger but whoever wins is going to be a great matchup for islam in this main event slot then we go over to the co-main we got leon rocky edwards he's back he's going to be fighting Either Shavkat or Bilal, I really don't know which route the UFC is going to take here. They can go either direction, and either way, it'll be a good fight for Leon. And then for the featured fight, we got my boy Kamaru Usman coming back fighting. Yep, he's fighting either Shavkat or Bilal. So whoever's not fighting Leon is going to be fighting Usman, in my opinion. I think this will be a great, great card. And, you know, for a lot of these cards, I made it so that the fights on the card kind of... They go into the next one. So Usman versus Shavkat or Bilal. The winner can fight the winner of Leon versus Shavkat Bilal and so on and so forth. You're going to notice a trend in these cards. Just wanted to point it out really early. Next up, we got UFC 303 taking place during International Fight Week. So the International Fight Week card, who's going to be the main event? Why not just do Drinkus versus Izzy here? I know a lot of people want to see Adesanya versus Hamza first, but I think... If Izzy wanted the title fight, he's going to get the title fight. He doesn't have to fight Hamza to get it. So let's do Duplessis versus Izzy for International Fight Week with the co-main event being Alexa Grasso taking on the winner of Manon Firo and Aaron Blanchfield, which is taking place in a couple weeks. I love that matchup. And then for the featured fight, like I said before, this, you know, we're going to have fights flow into the next one. We're going to have Shevchenko fight the loser of Firo versus Blanchfield. Okay, so I think this is a great main card. And we also going to throw in Costa and Hamza, because why not? And we're going to throw in Whitaker and Strickland. This is be a top-to-bottom banger card. We have two debatable number one contender middleweight fights on the same card as the middleweight champ fight. Sign me up. Next up, we have the August card, which will probably be UFC 304. Now, keep in mind, these numbers might get messed up if the June card doesn't have a numbered pay-per-view and instead... It has, you know, the Saudi Arabia fight night as its pay-per-view. But regardless, the August pay-per-view card, we're going to have Sean O'Malley and Marab in the main event. You can see that the background I chose as the green monster. I have a feeling that they're just going to make August cards in Boston because the crowds are just so electric. But Marab versus O'Malley in the main event, he's due. He's getting the title shot. And for the co-main, I have O'Malley's potential future opponent in Ilya Toporia fighting the winner of Yair and Ortega which is taking place this Saturday I think this would be a great fight Ilya wins he gets on the mic and he's like I want O'Malley O'Malley you better beat Marab and then O'Malley beats Marab and then that'll set up the, uh, an insane super fight I love that and then for the featured fight Volkanovsky's back he's fighting Mavzar Ivloyev you know everybody says Mavzar Ivloyev decision merchant you know, he needs a big win to finally get the title shot. Why not just give him Volkanovski? 
You could probably give him Holloway, but guess what? I also have Holloway versus Josh Emmett on the same card. I'm also predicting that, you know, Max loses to Gabe G at UFC 300. But, you know, this is a banger UFC 304 card if that were to happen. Mali Marab main event. Ilya Toporia versus Yair probably in the co-main. And Volk versus Mavzar in the featured fight. As well as Max versus Josh Emmett. Let's just see if Max can get his chin cracked. Or let's see if Josh Emmett can get his chin cracked. We don't know. But banger card next up we have the september pay-per-view which we do know is taking place in the sphere and so for those reasons we're gonna have the main event be john jones stipe it, you know his injury that he that took place last year his pec tear they said it's gonna take about nine months to recover which would set him on track to headline the august card but i think jones you know give himself another month if it's if it's still gonna be the stipe fight why not just wait another month so we got Jones versus Stipe in the main event at the Sphere with the co-main event being the winner of Jiri... No, sorry. The winner of Pereira Hill fighting the winner of Jiri Rockage. I think this is a banger. I know I'm just forgetting Magomed and Kalaev, but hear me out. If Pereira wins and Rockage wins, they're probably giving Rockage the title shot. And if Hill wins and Jiri wins, they're going to make that matchup happen. If... If Jiri wins and Pereira wins, maybe this can be Pereira versus Magomed. But regardless, great main, great co-main. And for the featured fight, we're going to have a third title fight. Wei Li versus Tatiana Suarez. Tatiana Suarez is due. Wei Li is probably going to run through Yan Zhao Nang at UFC 300. And this would set her up perfectly to fight in September against Tatiana Suarez, who everybody says is going to be the best strawweight title holder of all time. And basically, that's what I'm hearing at least. She's a savage prospect. Great grappling, good striking. Give me this card in the sphere next up we're going to ufc 306 in october and lately the october cards have been in abu dhabi for those reasons the main event has to be islam makachev yet again i'm i'm assuming he wins his previous title fight that i put him in and the main event is going to be here charles islam three armin islam three or gaethje islam it's gonna be one of those three fights here so if islam beats it's very complicated, but just know that I did all the math here, and this would this would line up if all the fights go as I think they will go. For those reasons, the co-main event, yes, this is also tricky. Hamzat versus Drikus or Izzy. So whoever wins the Drikus Izzy fight I did earlier will fight the winner of Costa Hamzat, which I think will be Hamzat. If Costa wins that fight, then it's gonna be the winner of Strickland Whitaker. It's a lot of moving pieces, but I think. Hamzad versus the winner of Izzy DDP is a good slot here, especially in Abu Dhabi. And then for the featured fight, we got Leon taking on Shavkat or Bilal. So he took on Shavkat or Bilal a couple pay-per-views back. And now he's going to take on the other guy, the guy that probably beat Usman, that I predicted. You know, like, it's hard to predict down the road because you don't know who's going to win or lose, even in the next couple days. Like, I don't even know what's going to happen, what fights we booked. So bear with me in this process. Just pretend that this works. This is a great main card for Abu Dhabi. Okay, like I said, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces for all of these pay-per-views to actually line up and work. And for those reasons, UFC 307 is going to be taking place in November, which is the Madison Square Garden card. It happens every November. The main event has to be Chandler McGregor. I mean, I was trying to put McGregor on the same card as John Jones in the sphere, perhaps. I don't think McGregor's going to want to do the sphere. I think he's, he's going to want to have a packed out crowd at MSG. If McGregor Chandler is not taking place at UFC 300, if it's not taking place during International Fight Week, this is basically the only other card I can see it taking place. So for those reasons, it's the main event. When you have a Conor McGregor as the main event, you can't really have super big title fights on the same card because McGregor needs to headline, not the title contenders and holders. For those reasons, we have Pantoja versus Moreno three. I think this would be three as the co-main event. I'm assuming Moreno beats Roy Val at UFC Mexico. I'm also assuming Pantoja retains his title at UFC Brazil, which I had him in. And this would be a great co-main. Then we go on to the featured fight. And again, assumptions galore. We have Pena versus Myra Buena Silva. My assumption is Pena beats Raquel Pennington. My second assumption is Raquel Pennington doesn't get their immediate rematch. And my third assumption is Myra Buena Silva somehow is back in the title picture at this point. She had to have maybe gotten a win since January. 
not really sure but i mean they did have beef so this is a good matchup for beef purposes and you know i don't want to stack the msg card too much when i have connor as the main not a bad card and we have arrived at the december card and as always the december card usually takes place in las vegas and when it's in vegas they're gonna call on a few of the same characters more than often. For those reasons, the main event, John Jones versus the winner of Aspinall Gone. I really hope it's Aspinall because if it's gone, I think John Jones is actually gonna retire after Stipe. If if Cyril Gone beats Aspinall and John Jones beats Stipe, John Jones is out. Like there's nothing left for him. What Jail Ten Almeida? No, no. So we really need Aspinall to come through and make this super fight happen. And the co-main event, we have another super fight. So <laughs> I know you're looking. Sean O'Malley versus Ilya Toporia. I'm assuming O'Malley can knock out Marab. And then I'm also assuming Ilya has defended his title once up until this point. And he beat Yair slash Ortega. And if those are both things that happened, this is a banger fight. And I would love to see this as the co-main under a John Jones main event. Holy shnikes. And then the featured fight, we have another heavyweight banger because I'm assuming Al Jailton Almeida can beat Curtis Blades. He's going to take on the loser of Aspinall Gone, which I hope is gone. Because then we have a striking masterclass performer versus a grappling masterclass performer. And we're going to really see if Gone has improved his grappling by this point. If Gon can get through Almeida, then all of a sudden, he's back in the picture and we actually care about him again. For those reasons, this is a banger UFC 308. And I would just like to say thank you for getting to the end of the video, you savage. Make sure you follow me on the gram. I post a lot of pics there and just some random memes. You know, you know make sure you follow me on Twitter. I give pre-fight analysis. I give, you know, right before the fight starts, I give my actual prediction and my bets that I put in. And you can also subscribe and like the channel because I'm going to be making a lot more content like this in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming future. So with all that being said, have a great day, you savage.